she is before she's pretty but she's really dirty hey guys Aaron again I am back with Sean at Street Legends NC give him a follow on Instagram uh, since the video of him doing the paint correction went so well and I was so happy with it I decided to bring the M4 in and we're gonna do a little two-stage paint correction so I can show you guys the right way to do it from a professional detailer to prep your car if you want to do that uh, ceramic coating. All right, so Aaron brought his car back, or this car back, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna do some C Quartz UK, right? Yep. yep. Uh, that was the first coating I've ever used uh, when I first got started with this about 10 years ago. And uh, it's a good coating to be like, for any DIYer who wants the best, strongest, long lasting coating, I think this one's a good one. So he came in, uh, did a little walk around the car to see what it looked like, kind of condition that it's in, gauges, you know, how much work is to be done. The car's in really good shape, you know, although this color hides swirls and scratches pretty good, so that's, that's A plus for me. <laughs> um, but I didn't see anything out of the ordinary, so we're gonna go ahead and get it washed. Uh, we're gonna strip any waxes or anything that he's put on there now, and then we'll bring it inside, blow it dry. Um, and clay bar. Before we do all that, bring it inside. I forgot to mention iron remover. That's a big thing. I see the back end's got a lot of, you know, brake dust and tar removal. Um, but I, I definitely don't want to do that inside because that stuff. If anybody's ever used that before, it smells god awful. So you can probably smell it out here if you if you catch it just right. But we'll do all that out here, and then we'll bring it in and we'll get started. All right. So we're starting with the wheels, just giving them a good spray off with his. Uh using a pressure washer on a kind of low power. But it's a really neat wheel cleaner. If you already have semi-clean wheels, you can use it to uh, clean the tires and the brakes, or tires and the wheels. This is um, Sonex wheel cleaner. It's got an iron remover in it that will help break down brake dust. All these BMW, big brake, Mercedes cars are notorious for their brake dust and this this may or may not work on yours depends on the type of pads you have but that stuff turns purple like iron remover does yeah doesn't do much for cleaning the tires though okay. you see that purple one is called brake buster yep uh pns brake buster pns it's the same company that makes Beadmaker. Yeah, I'll put uh, links to all this stuff down in the description, of course. It's a cool little brush. Yeah, it helps when you got to do like, that kind of stuff. But I like yeah. to do this first. Yeah. But since we're out here in the sun, um, it's a good idea to not try to wet the car down like you normally would just so that you don't let the water dry on the car and then create more problems with water spots yeah if I was inside it, it wouldn't really matter but still even inside I still like to use this procedure it's just easier Clean water in the bucket? Yeah. 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 You can put soap in it, but it really doesn't do much. Yeah. It's a lot easier to take them off to do this, but yeah. making do with what I can. dust and dirt off right now. Let the 
this stuff is uh, mixable, so I mix it how I want it. And uh, it's a little bug remover help dissolve them. <laughs> There's one over there you can show. melts them off. Kind of almost encapsulates them and then lifts them off the paint. But you don't want this to dry on your paint. And what product is that one? Uh, I think this is 3D Bug Remover. Brands 3D. This is kind of, for me, the way I like to use it is just to spray it on there. Right as you start to see it dry, if you're out in the sun. Um, and just keep it wet. They may not remove them all. Like if you're looking at it, you'll probably still see some. But what it does do is it breaks them up. So when you're going to use your wash mitt, it'll pick them up with them. See it? All the black stuff. Oh yeah. Oh, it says these little black dots. You can also so use this to kick kind of loosen them up. So theoretically, you would let this sit, and then you can wipe them right off. Kind of, if yeah, you, I mean, it's not gonna hurt you if you feel it, but you can feel how lubricated it is. Oh yeah. So what I would do is, if you had this much problems with this, is you could do this one time, loosen them up, get them kind of started, and then you can spray this on, foam the car, mm -hmm. and then continue uh, continue on washing, and that'll help kind of not scratch your car with these things in your mitt because yeah, yeah it always gets over the entire back the UK overseas they call it traffic film same concept as to us it's bug remover it's the same yeah. thing really. boom cannon time See now, I wouldn't have thought to open the uh, gas cap there. Well, not the gas cap, but you know. All right, now that we got all the foam on there, looks like we're just doing the good old two bucket method. One with fresh water and one with our soap. Yeah, let me show you something else before you go too far. So I have an old crusty one. Uh -huh. I mean, it's not crusty, but you know what I mean. Yeah. I wouldn't use this on the paint. Uh -huh. But what I do do with this is like, get the car done and then all your lower parts of the car, just to give you an example, yeah. I'll rinse it out. You can see what it looks like. It's blue, right? Uh -huh. So if I take that, your car's pretty clean, but nine times out of ten, uh -huh. this is going to be gross. Right. Yeah. And I don't want that on my nice mint. Yeah. A lot of people like to uh, foam the car and then rinse the foam off, but I feel like the foam has a lot more lubricity when I'm rinsing it off or when I'm wiping it down. So I kind of like to leave it on there. Yeah. Plus, it also helps keep the car from drying out, especially in the sun that we're in. Yeah. It's the frame and paint method you taught me. Yeah. <laughs> it's always stuck with me, I guess. <laughs> not applying any kind of pressure, I'm just holding it down. I mean, it, doesn't, it, it really doesn't matter anyway, but since we're gonna be polishing the car, but you know, good habits.
What's this stuff? Iron remover. Ah, uh, the iron remover. Do one side at a time. Yeah, that's a, that's a good smell. Yeah. You guys are lucky you can't smell this at home. Whew. So the idea here is to let it sit, see long enough to uh, if it reacts, and you'll know it reacts because it will start to turn purple. Um, and a lot of that stuff comes from the highway, people's brakes. If you do a lot of highway driving, you'll see a lot. Uh, black cars don't you don't really see it. I mean, it's on there, but you don't really see it. Uh, and then cars you keep clean all the time. You don't have to do this. This is like really just for major prep work. You know what I mean? I mean, now if you have a coated car and you go six months, eight months in and you haven't really, or you start to see the, the, the coatings properties are diminishing, this is what you would do to clay it. So let's think of it as a liquid clay. Here's very very small amount but you can start to see it turning purple so the good news is, is you don't have a lot of that so that's kind of what you want to see see something in here mm. yeah this stuff stinks <laughs> yeah do not do this in your garage Another thing you don't really want to dry on the <laughs> car. Just keeping it wet a little bit to let it keep uh, reacting. Yep. I've been doing this a long time. I've never noticed where, like, you have a, you know, tops of the cars. Very rarely do I ever see it on there. So anyone buying this or thinking like, oh, I don't need this step. Um, if you have a black car, it's highly, highly recommended. If you're trying to shoot for perfection, it's highly recommended. The only reason why I say that is if you have a black car and all these little iron particles uh, are in the paint, which is what this is kind of dissolving, and you start polishing that black paint and notice that no matter what you do, your correction is still foggy, still hazy. More than likely, your pads are building up all these little particles that you're getting in there into the pad and then you're not really getting a true a true correction okay but if you do buy these they do come in smaller bottles but just plan on using the whole bottle for one car because it all doesn't go a long way and it's expensive for what it is so you're just letting it sit on there a couple minutes pretty much just checking to see if i see any kind of reactions uh, -huh. uh here's a good one more reactions the longer you leave it on kind of thing yeah Pretty much, you know, your PPF yeah, film. Yeah, right around the rim of the PPF. You know, some cars look like this and they just, the whole entire thing bleeds. <laughs> but yeah, this, what it's doing is taking the iron that's in here, you know, brakes especially, and uh, just dissolves it. Yeah. So, kind of neat, new technology, I guess. But once it starts turning purple, that's pretty much it. Distilled water and O&R, &R, um, and then a medium clay, and a press-all bottle, which is nice because it sprays once and it sprays twice. Yeah. So, you do a lot of this, yeah. <laughs> you get big forearms by the time you're done. So we're going to be doing a two-step paint correction, you call it. So what is, uh, explain to the two steps. Two-step is this. a compounding stage to remove most of your defects so all your scratches and swirls that are in the paint and then we're gonna switch over and do a finer polish to refine the paint even further adding more depth more clarity more gloss um, it's like I was telling you before you know this car is not bad enough you could probably get away with doing a polish just a single stage polish but uh, when I'm doing coatings I, I like perfection so you know, to each their own. If it's your car and you just want to 
have the protection side of things. So you don't even really need to do a polish, but uh, it's recommended. Helps the coating stick better. Especially if you've been, you know, years and years of putting uh, waxes and sealants on it, like this car. Almost looks like you have a ceramic sealant, maybe, that's been put on here. Uh, the only thing I have done to it is, um, see, I've been washing it with the ONR recently, and then I have that, uh, was it Clear Shine brand, I think, or something? That is the, it's kind of like their spray on. Hose uh, off. Yeah. Yeah, I think that actually is a semi ceramic. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's their spray on ceramic kind of deal. Yep, so polishing is going to remove any of that stuff um, and help again hospital grade, hospital grade clean it's always key so once I get done doing this we'll blow dry get all the water out of the cracks and crevices I mean I'm not feeling anything grabbing you know you've done your clay bar before and it seems to work because you know, barely anything on there yeah I did clay bar it a couple months ago um, which uh, was interesting because from the rate you're going, it's about 200 times faster than I did it, so it's <laughs> nice to see how what you can really do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the concept of clay is, is you're putting it over the paint, right? Okay. And a, a really bad car, you'll feel it. It almost feels like, it feels gritty. Yeah. Um, and what you do is you kind of feel where, if it's gritty, and then you just focus in that area, and then keep moving forward until it doesn't feel that way anymore. And I'm not really getting anything grabbing um, my clay bar that's concerning but you know again we did the iron removal which is a liquid form of this right so that helps I'm sure it's mostly my fantastic clay bar job uh, yeah we'll talk about <laughs> that I'll give you that I mean again you know, I, I always save all the lower lower parts for the last I don't want to bring that up on the back end so I'm just feeling it with my fingers. You want to be careful with clay bar around PPF. Now, if I go straight down, more than likely it's going to leave that in there. So you can always go up or around it or beside it. Yep. And I check it. It doesn't look bad. I'm gonna tuck away all the impurities and get some clean clay at the top. I was telling Sean that uh, the thing I used was a clay bar rag. I guess it's the newer way, the easier way at least for me to uh, to do it but i guess it's pretty much the same concept my clay was just tacked to a rag essentially yeah yeah i don't think they last as long you know if you're doing this for a living and you have a, a bunch of what i was saying earlier you know really really bad cars or like people's right. cars customers cars that you haven't done or seen and i think a clay towel is probably good um, you know you can drop it on the ground yeah it's more disposable <laughs> <laughs> this if i drop it on the ground it's <laughs> Done, I'm throwing it away. I just be glad that I replaced that lip with a new one since uh, last time because it was all chopped up. Yeah. And <laughs> What'd cut, you do with it? Cut the crap out of you, threw it away. All right, next step, we're bringing out the blow dryer. I don't judge me for the uh, plug-in kind. <laughs> One I want 600 bucks, and I just this works just as good. <laughs> yeah. So now we've blown dry it. Um, what I like to do is, you're always gonna have some water left over, and I like to use a uh, the same prep spray you would use to do the coating right before you're getting ready to coat it, wiping all the polishes and oils off. So it's kind of a lubricant, a lubricant for my towel, as well as it's kind of removing some of the leftover waxes and, and grease. It's 
So which one are you using here? This is a, a new prep spray from Meguiar's. Okay. It's in their professional line. At the end of the day, it's pretty much just alcohol and water, but using alcohol and water compared to some of these manufactured coating preps, they're slicker. So if you've ever used alcohol and water, it's really grabby. I feel like it would probably work better in re the removal of old waxes, but I use enough of this by the time I'm ready to coat it, it's pretty much removed. So we're getting ready to compound this. Um, Roots is in the shop, but I bought this cheap Chinese clover uh, when I first started, like six, seven years ago. I never had a problem with this. It cost me a hundred bucks from China. It is what it is. Um, Minzerna 400, it's my go-to compound for the first stage. I've tried everything that you can imagine, any boutique brand, overseas brand, I always come back to this. There's something about this, it just cuts like it should and it actually finishes down to when I get to my polishing stage, I don't have a lot of work to do left. So, best thing, best compound I've ever used. Fresh pad, so we're just gonna kinda get it worked in. A couple of drops, and get started. Speed setting three and a half. We'll start out with two just to move this around. And then we're gonna move up to three, see how it cuts. If it's rock hard like most BMWs, then we might move it up to four or four and a half. So what I'm looking for while I'm polishing or correcting or whatever I'm doing, if I have a machine on the car, I'm not looking at the machine. I'm looking through the machine and seeing what my compound is doing. So with this stuff, I have a really long working time. A lot of them are real short. You know, you get a couple passes and then it's dried up. But this is why I like this because you have a long working time. I can really work this paint in and start removing the scratches. And as I'm working it in, I'm looking at what I'm doing and where I've been to see if I'm getting a good correction. Uh, and that's kind of the art or the, the, the theory behind it. So what I did was I cut it here just so that when I wipe this off and put some lights on it, you can kind of see the difference, but I'm already liking what I'm seeing, so. And you're kind of uh, trying to avoid edges and uh, stuff as you go? Uh, I, well, you have PPF and I don't want to dig that in. Right. And as far as this goes, this is going to take a different kind of machine. Okay. You can work it in like this and get half of it. Uh -huh but the top part is going to require a smaller, smaller. one if, if you're trying to go, again, for perfection, but we're doing a coating, so we kind of want to. Um, because this is technically, you know, it's technically three inches, so I'd have to use a three-inch pad to do this. This is one inch. I'd have to use a one-inch pad for that. So theoretically, if that's all you had, you can make this work, but you're, you know, you're hanging off here and you're hanging off here. So you're going to be one of, you're going to be one of, you're going to want to be really careful how you do it. Same thing with this. You know, you can do it, and I've been there. You know, well, machines get expensive. You used to have over $1,500 in machines alone. But if you're, if you're trying to do this for a living or if you're trying to really, really go in and do it the right way, every little panel or every size has its own machine, theoretically. This already. compared to, like, even though that's pretty smooth. Yeah, this is already pretty smooth, and this is mega smooth. So this might be really hard for your camera to pick up because your car hides scratches pretty easily. But I did see one down here. 
see? You can see it in this light. If you look at it at the right angle. Can you see these? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, you can see them there in the corner. Yeah, it starts from like here. Uh-huh. Yep. Some pretty rough ones, right? Yep. Yeah, so this will be a good before and after. In the right light, you can see them. Just from the side, you would notice. This is what I was talking about. One inch pad, one inch space. Fits perfectly. That's kind of what I mean. But it's a little electric toothbrush. You see a little bit here, but it gives you a little indication of uh, what we're doing. Yeah, you still see a little bit of it on the bottom panel here where you yeah. didn't get, and then where you did hit. It is all gone. All right, so I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Aaron do this part since this is the easy part. Uh, it's also the most kind of rewarding part. I can do easy. So we're gonna do a finishing polish. I've got done pretty much 99% of this side. I've got the rear bumpers, front bumpers, and hood, and all the other sides that left. But we're at a good stopping point to where I can carry on to a different part of the car. And if he wants to kind of jump in and get his hands dirty on this side, so I'm gonna show him how to do the. Uh, quick little refining polish. All right. It's the same concept here. We same. don't need a lot. Different polish there? Uh, yeah, this is a Sonex Perfect Finish. Again, vetted throughout the different kind of polishes out there. This is the best one as far as uh, finish polish. It doesn't cut a lot. So you're not, gonna, you're not gonna fix things with this, but what this does is takes your compounding stage and just brings it down to a jewel polish so deep that you can reach your hand in it kind of look. It's like our next higher grit. Yeah, if you were, if this was sandpaper, this would be like 8,000 grit. Right. So nothing that's crazy. Uh, low speed. Start moving it in. The cool thing with this is you can kind of make it, you can do, you can work bigger panels because you're not trying to correct anything. You're really just trying to refine it. So you speed it up. Real light pressure. I'm looking for the thing to spin, the pad. So if I stop, it'll stop. It's just real nice and easy. And we're gonna work this in until the, basically the polish is broken down to clear. But this one has a really long working time, more than anything I've ever used, so it's gonna feel like you're here forever. got a real soft pad on here kind of like a very light cut to it not something you want to put wax on with but definitely great for finish polishing theoretically you could do this you could do the whole side of the car before you wipe it off probably won't show up on your camera but I know it's there on a dark car this would be extremely important on lighter color cars it's not necessarily important but it really just depends on whose expectations and for me seeing this outside would make a huge difference if I just corrected this quarter panel and left this as is and brought it outside over time you'd start to see like oh yeah that's a it's got more of a blue hue to it than this does this will look like the color it should. Yeah. So I'll just carry on the rest of it and that's pretty much it. All right, I'm back. This is day two and Sean has finished the two stages of the paint correction and it looks amazing. I'm sure it already looked pretty clean in the before video, but oh man, just look at that. It's like a showroom in here now. And uh, touching this, it is smooth as glass. So step, the next step we're gonna do here is he's gonna ceramic coat it for me. And I have a video on the full ceramic coat how-to. So you can go check that out here in this link. But first I just wanna show you the product that he's gonna use this time for me. So that uh, if you guys are interested, you can find it on Amazon yourselves.
All right, so this is a CarPro C-Quartz UK. It uh, is a product I started using early on in my career. It's honestly one of the strongest ones that a DIYer could do. So it is, it can be finicky in certain temperatures. Like if you're trying to do this outside, it's not a good idea or like above 85 degrees. You just have to work quickly. Um, in the, if you buy the kit, it'll come with the, the bottle of ceramic. This bottle looks small, but you could probably do two layers on a car that this size. You could probably do two layers on a four door average car, uh, one layer on a big truck. Um, comes with the coating. And then they actually give you a bottle of their uh, spray sealant. So this is gonna be your sacrificial layer. It's like we talked about in the last video. Uh, I, don't, I don't really like this that much for somebody who's not used to using it. Um, it can be kind of streaky if you use too much. Uh, it can be streaky if you use too little. It takes kind of a, the right kind of towel. But if you wanna get crazy with it, you can take this bottle and then dilute it down with distilled water. So one to one, so half and half, and it'll work a little bit better. Um, but it is good. So once you get done coating the car, give it a few days, don't let the car get wet and then apply this and this will help with uh, water spots. Um, it'll also give you like, again, the sacrificial layer of protection. So in the kit, they give you your applicator uh, and then they give you the suede applicators to go over top. And the way you do this is you apply this and there's little channels in here and we'll shove those down in here. Prime the pad and do a section at a time. Let it sit for a second and wipe it off and keep moving. And that's pretty much it. Uh, again, you know, towels are crazy. So buy your pack of Costco towels. Um, and when you start seeing the towels that you're using, not really wiping off the product, toss them in a bin, start with fresh towels. You can never have enough towels when you're doing coating, especially uh, UK. CarPro makes a regular non-UK version. Um, it's not as hydrophobic as this one is. Still really good, I mean, it's, don't, don't get me wrong. Um, but if you're if you're on the fence and you, you're kind of afraid of it, I think the original version that they make of this is uh, a little bit better for somebody that's just trying it out. Still strong. All right, so we just got done doing the majority of the car, and before I change this this guy out, um, doing stuff like in here, if you want to get real particular with it, if you have this on the block, it's going to be real difficult to kind of do that. So because this is technically primed with the product, Put a couple of drops in there and then I can just work it in by hand and that way I can get it all in the areas and the cracks and the crevices that you know your towel can reach just makes for a better job so if you get any tight areas cracks or crevices where your applicator doesn't reach there's no stress no harm in doing it by hand all right, one last thing. I just wanted to show you how much of this bottle was used on one coat of the car. As you can see, it's about maybe 20%. So yeah, this one will last you quite a while. And store it in the refrigerator, not in your hot garage, if you want it to last longer. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something and hope you can apply this to your car so that you can uh, get some fantastic results. If you are in the North Carolina area and don't want to tackle this yourself, come see Sean Dallas at Street Legends. He is the man and will hook you up. So uh, contact him. Again, here's his Instagram. Go ahead and follow him there and we'll see you next time.